Hey, what's going on guys? Zev here, and welcome to another Chain Soldier video. Today, we're going to be discussing the most iconic combat ability in the series, Slave. So to break it down for you, the abilities of Chain Soldier are granted almost strictly to women who eat special peaches from a separate hostile world known as Mato. When eaten, the peaches grant these women anything from simple levitation to absolute godly abilities. And the most well-used ability in the series is Eternal Chain, aka Slave. This allows Kyoko to have a binding spiritual contract with who or whatever she grants this ability to as long as it's presumed presumably a biological being. Once the user has been granted this ability, it's rather mysterious how exactly they'll react. When Kyoka used this ability on a regular Shuki, it simply became like a submissive fighting dog. However, when this ability was used on Yuki Rakura, it had tapped into his potential and transformed him into a beastly figure capable of great strength and fighting prowess. Now, there are many layers to this ability. For starters, Yuki is not supplied an unlimited amount of strength when he is in his slave form. He is immediately drained once reverted back to human form. However, further training in his human and his slave form is able to strengthen his resolve while in his various slave forms and their abilities. Yes, I said various. The most powerful aspect of this ability is that Kyoka is able to share the Eternal Chains ability with whoever she gives permission to do so. And when a new master is given hold of the chains, Yuki will then gain a new vaguely similar transformation with different abilities to match. These forms are usually related to his current master in one way or another. Now there are a couple noticeable drawbacks to this ability. First of all being that sharing this ability with others will drain Kyoka of some of her energy leaving her feeling worn out, to the point of near loss of consciousness. However, this only applies to first-time lenders of Yuki, and after they have established mastery, they will be able to take hold of Yuki free of consequence. The other notable drawback is the, well, reward aspect. You see, those that are given the title of slave have to be rewarded by their current rider, and when I say they have to, I mean they literally have no choice. Their bodies will forcibly take control over their own needs so that the conditions of the rewards are met. Now, the thing is, is that the reward given is based off of what the slave desires within their subconscious. That being being said, Yuki, being a young adult man, you can imagine what rewards would come from being gifted the title of slave. Now, the length of the reward does depend on how much the slave had accomplished during the time in any of his battle forms. It could be as simple as a pat on the head to lewd bath time. A definite win for him, but his master may not see it that way. Another note is that Yuki is physically bound to react to his master's every command, which may make some situations limited to his master's own reactive capabilities. But going back to yet again the greatest thing about this ability is that there are so, so many forms that Yuki can take hold over. Each time someone is is given permission by Kyoka to use this ability, all they have to do is grasp the chain attached or Yuki kisses their hand in human form. Yuki will transform into a new state completely original to the current master. With this comes a low and wide range of abilities. However, these abilities cannot overlap, so he's stuck with only the abilities granted to that specific form. So let's go through the various forms Yuki has taken from various masters. His main form is of course Eternal Chain Slave. When Yuki took this form for the first time, he easily mowed down a horde of Shuki in a second, as well as showing great reaction time to Kyoka's demands. Right after after this presumably dozens if not hundreds of Shuki form to make a giant Shuki and the duo take this thing out like it's nothing. The big takeaway from this is that Kyoka claims that if a single Shuki infiltrates the human world, the casualties would be immense. And Yuki took down several dozen like no problem. It should also be noted that Yuki can move fast enough to outrun a Humvee and everyday vehicles that's moving at considerable speed. Yuki's speed and strength in this form is considerably powerful and definitely the most utilized for a good reason. Also he was able to partially transform after kissing some of Kyoka his clothing, and this was enough for him to one-shot a colossal-sized Yuki. However, this was very temporary. He was also seen evolving in this form, however, it's unknown whether he can do so in other forms. Moving on from the initial form, there are many other forms for Yuki to take hold of. Whirlwind allows him to move in rapid succession in terms of movement and attack while severely hindering his overall offensive and defensive abilities. War Cloud is the combined mastery of Himari and Kyoka as shared riders. This form allows him to shoot a large beam of energy capable of eliminating large quantities of opponents at once. His Shining Star form completely removes all combat capabilities, however heightens his senses to the point of seeing through solid objects in a wide range of sensitive hearing to the point of hearing one's heartbeat. His Iwatushi, or Boulder Melter form, gives him incredible physical strength while robbing him of his speed. While taking on the form of Phoenix, he builds an immense level of speed and flight, which can also bring offensive capabilities. His Killer Fang form proves to be his most dangerous and ravenous form. He is capable of great speed, slicing apart multiple Shuki in seconds, the ability to place a marker on hundreds 
hundreds of Shuki and killing all of them in an instant. He also shows crazy levels of healing after practically recrafting his skull after being caved in by the first chief's barrage of attacks, as well as after his body was ripped apart by a god of thunder. However, in this form, Yuki appears to be incredibly unstable, as he immediately tried to kill his master after wiping out the Shuki. For Spring Man, with the price of a slight decrease in power, his body becomes much more malleable and by extension, a buildup of physical invulnerability. This form is rather exhausting for Yuki to handle, and it also makes him crave sweets. Roar gives him the form of a motorcycle for his rider and gives him the ability of emitting deafening noises that disable nearby Shuki, as well as breathing devastating flames and even enough force to physically devastate a Shuki. Hagoromo has Yuki take the form of a bodysuit and giving his master the ability to use her powers while tapping into some of Yuki's own power from his base slave form. However, this ability is lucky to last more than 30 seconds. And finally, Hidden Moon allows him and his rider to obtain complete invisibility, allowing for great advantage in combat. The last couple things that I want to note down are that upon just the transformations, there are other abilities that come with the Eternal Chains. The most noteworthy being when Kyoka absorbed Yuki's soul into her blade to release a devastating attack. Also, the slave technique is overall so incredibly powerful that even the head honcho of the Matsu Defense Force cannot resist its reward factor. All in all, the slave ability proves to be one of the most powerful abilities in the series with limitless potential. Very few characters are able to ward off the great power attained by most of these forms. And that right there is going to tie up today's video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, everyone. That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home And my balls keep telling me to let me home Oh, just let me home